Greta Thunberg, you know the name. She's a young lady, a girl really, who is the face of the climate movement. Except for the thing is, she's not actually that young anymore. I mean, listen, I wish I was just 20, like she is, but she is 20. It's not a teenager anymore. It's certainly not a girl. Although meeting her in person today reminded me of how physically small she is. And I don't know if it's a medical condition or just a particular unique look, but she truly looks like someone who is 12 or 13. She may even be developmentally challenged. I don't know, and I'm certainly not casting aspersions. I'm just describing the fact that a 20-year-old woman can look like a child for so long. The reason that's relevant, again, it's not a personal aesthetic criticism. It's rather unlocking the key to her success. This 20-year-old woman who has aged out of being a child can come across as a young, naive child and has a very powerful resonance when a child prophet shall shame and name the old men who have put us in a climate crisis. Remember when she went to the United Nations and gave a passionate speech? How dare you? How dare you steal my dreams? Remember this? This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? That was powerful for one reason. Because it sounded like a child as admonishing the grown-ups instead of real life, which is grown-ups typically chiding and disciplining a child. Alas, Greta Thunberg is no child, but she still has tremendous PR value. Now, we at Rebel News have been following Greta Thunberg for years. For example, we scrummed her briefly when she was in New York City, and it was there that we discovered she actually doesn't do interactive conversations well at all. She sort of panics or freezes up or just goes silent. Here's a quick hit from when she was in New York City. Greta, 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 how was the ride over? How was the ride over? Greta, Greta. We met up with Greta again when she was in Alberta passing through. We found out where she was staying at a hotel. We booked a room in the hotel as well, and we met her by chance, or we were lingering there, in the hotel office uh, business lounge. And uh, here's how that interaction went. It was our former reporter, Kean Bexty, who approached her in a very friendly way and then asked firmer and firmer questions until she sort of said, oh, this is an interview. I'm getting out of here. Here's Kean Bexty interviewing Greta Thunberg in Red Deer a few years back. Can I, can I ask? I'm curious. Cause, you know, Calgary's an oil city. Yeah. Why don't you guys go to China or Saudi Arabia? Protest yeah. them. Because right now I'm here and I stopped flying. So to go there, that would have to... But I mean, I went here because I received an invitation mm -hmm. to go here. If I received an invitation to go to China, I would of course go to China. So who's, you, will you be disclosing your finances? Will you be telling us who is paying for your trip, your Tesla, and bringing you to our country in the middle of an election? Thank you very much. I'll pay. You're paying for everything. You pay for the Tesla? No, no one's paying for the Tesla. You bought the Tesla for free. You borrowed the Tesla for free from yeah. New York. Yeah, Will you, have, you, have you registered as a third party advertiser coming to this country in the middle of an election period? It's the middle of an election, you understand that. Have, have you registered as a third party advertiser? 
I'm sure she will not talk about the elections at all. I will not. Yeah. I have never mentioned the elections. The climate, you understand that climate change is a pivotal policy, uh, is a ballot box I'm question in this election. Right now, so. This is a ballot box question in this election, and you're you're rallying, you're doing political, you're engaging in our right. political discourse as a foreigner. Politics. Climate change is politics, is it not? It's science. Climate, and so is science going to solve it? You, would you like a technical solution to climate change, or would you like politicians I'd to solve really it? I'd really appreciate it if you stopped talking to us right now. We have a meeting, yeah. um, and this is So you're, you're, you're engaging in political discourse yeah, in a foreign country we're, as we're, a foreigner. Thank you very much. Will you be... This is also slightly harassing, and I do hope you contact yeah. if needs be, so... Will you be disclosing your finances, and will you be registering as a third-party operative? Will you be registering as a third-party operative? The final part of our interactions with Greta was when we actually went to Stockholm, Sweden, and to try and find out a little bit more about Greta's past. Who was she? Who was organizing everything? Who was paying for everything? Who was writing those pithy tweets? Who was the PR machine behind her? We tried to find out, but didn't get very far. Here's a clip from our visit to Stockholm, which was part of our documentary called Greta, Inc. Greta, would you be able to tell me Hey, hey. What school are, are you, you actually are you striking press? from? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Show me your press card. I think it was school. Yes. So when you actually started your school strike, were you leaving the classroom or did you have a day off from your school that you were at? You, you, you know that the school that you go to, you have multiple days off a week. You don't actually have to go to class 9 to 5. Did you walk valiantly from the classroom like you've led the world to believe? Or did you just have days off on Friday? Nice to meet you again. I remember you from Edmonton. Yes. I remember yeah. your Tesla. It was full of plastic. Oh, it was not my Tesla. I shared it with many others. Well, that's what you already know about Greta, our attempts to cover her briefly in cities where she was briefly at. Well, we're in Davos, Switzerland for the World Economic Forum, a get-together of billionaires and oligarchs with some of the highest carbon footprints you'll ever find. In fact, you'll recall we visited the private jet airport where the planes just didn't stop coming, and then once the planes stopped coming, the helicopters kept coming. Well, it's, it's quite a thing for Greta Thunberg to go to such a high carbon event such as Davos with all these billionaires. But she was here and we heard that she was speaking at the CNBC studio. That's an excerpt from my show every night. It's called The Ezra Levant Show. That's me, Ezra Levant. Uh, you can see the whole thing behind our paywall. Well, there's a lot of goodies behind there. I do a show every weeknight. My friends Sheila Gunn-Reed and David Menzies and Nat and Kat have their shows too. You get a ton of content for just eight bucks a month. There's so much in there you won't find anywhere else. Go to rebelnewsplus.com.